So I was sexually violated my first 10 minutes of going into the prison. Of course, the initial shock of me getting three years was like, yeah. my life is over. I'm crying. Dude next to me, he's like, oh, I got 13 years. Them tears dried up quick. Over here is some dude getting beat up in the back. Like some old white dude getting, uh, uh. Like, yeah, getting cooked. And they were like, don't look back. Put your hands on the wall. If anybody takes their hands off the wall, this dude grabs my private part mm. and squeezes it. Just yeah. hoping that the, I take the, my hands off the wall. Yeah. Grabbed it from the back. No freaky. No, no freaky. <laughs> no, from, from the side, right? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he gives me a reach sexual, around. He, sexual assault. Sexual Yo, bro, they, good. they are good for that. But if you know about the credit card side. So all these gangsters that's running around on live talking all that stuff that was upstate New York. Many of them is not telling you that they've been sexually assaulted. So you had a choice. Whether you was going to put that work in, get an extra five to seven years. It's going to be continuous. No matter where you go, they are going to sexually assault you. This is the king of the world, this is the king of the world, this is the king of the world, this is the king of Welcome back to a new video on Rip Right HD. Right now we just had the battle settle it on the bars. We out here in Grid City in the Bronx. This is my brother, Alhamdulillah, Abdul Raouf. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And um, we're going to be talking about his uh, situation as a Muslim, right? Um, he's actually from New York. What part of New York are you from, bro? Upstate New York, outside Ups of Albany. Outside of Albany. And what when you was like, you know, in the streets, what were they calling you? First uh, name, last name, how does it work? It was calling me D or Slim or, you know, yeah. whatever my street name was at the time. Okay, he yeah. did some prison time. So we kind of, you know, we're going to get involved into, a little bit into his life as a Muslim, um, reverting to Islam when why you know where did it happen and and so on and so forth okay so you was born and raised in upstate upstate outside of albany kuksaki new york Small and how old are you i'm 42. 42 alhamdulillah. Yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah and when did you jump off the porch like you started to get into like crime when i was like 19. i mean i was in trouble my whole life like 19. just little stuff here and there and, but and what's your ethnicity i'm native american and I'm, african american yeah. Allah, allahu akbar Allah. okay and um, so about 19, you, you started That's like... That's when I called my case, which oh. traveled with me until I went to prison. So I was When on, you say traveled with you, what you mean? I was you bailed on, out. I was on bailed out. I got probation. And after three years, I bail violated probation. And they just started my uh, prison term from there. Okay. And what was, the, what was the terms of the probation and the prison time? So it was a violent crime. So I was given five years probation. But thankfully, you know... I was more of an accessory to the crime of okay. a robbery with a weapon. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So strong, like an armed robbery. Yeah. So because of that, <coughs> you know, thankfully, um, well, a lot of people like just do the time, don't do probation. But at the time, I took the probation because I wasn't really out there like that. So I thought, oh, I could do these five years, and it was pretty much a trap. I was better off doing the. Doing, Do, the, doing, doing the, the three turn. flat. Yeah, doing yeah. the three flat because yeah, then yeah. you end up getting some time. But at the time, it was a smart move because I wasn't in there like that. But they, when I got bailed out, my case carried for two years through the courts. And then they gave me the five years. So it was like those two years I was out of trouble. Then after eight months of going on that probation, I violated. And then they sent me, the judge wasn't playing any games. And he was just like. And this was all upstate New York? Upstate Middletown, New York. Okay. And, yeah. um. What you was just like into robberies, guns, no, drugs? No, it was more just drugs and you know, just little street stuff, you know. And then boom, you caught that three, that three it, because of the violation, because I was doing drugs and they drug tested me a number, a few times, and I failed the drug test. But you was using crack? No, nah, <laughs> <laughs> I coke though. Yeah, I was smoking coke with the, uh, you know, putting in weed. You know, oh, little, you was doing. And I was popping mostly pills though. Before pills were in, now that's what I was about to say. You was popping pills back then. Yeah, it was with all white dudes, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, okay, they, so y'all was, was giving me these. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. And then boom, you 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 do your three years probation. So you were still. Well, I was. Yeah. No, yeah. I was. I only. Honestly, you did three years and violated. I kind of. It was only like eight months and I violated oh, because yeah. they kept me on just going back and forth to court before they even. So did you have? Did you have like a curfew? No, it was no pretty curfew. pretty lax with me, and it was just me not just doing what I'm doing and not really caring thinking and know. how was the county where you was, was 
did you notice any like the county violence? jail yeah nah the county is up there it's not too bad it's like, not like records it's like no any problems. muslims or at that time you didn't know nah, i didn't know was. about islam i knew about islam because my grandmother my uh my father's side of the family they were muslim so oh. when i was young i would see like my great aunts they would wear niqab this was back in the 80s you know and they, you know i hear people joking like oh they look like ninjas i didn't know i'm only like six seven years six, old seven. eight years old and then my grandmother, she tried to introduce me to Islam back when I was like 15, 16, 18. I'm not trying to hear it because I'm drinking. Yeah. I always respected that. And I always said, you know, if anything, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I always said I'm Muslim, right? I, I'm not Muslim, but I would always follow what my grandmother follows. Like I was going to get a tattoo and my sister's like, oh, why don't you get a cross? I'm like, I don't, I'm not Christian. Yeah. You know, but I was like, I got you. Yeah. I was like, uh. I always followed the religion of my grandmother, even right though I really didn't know what I was saying. But I was just like, that's my that's what I believe. I don't know. I just was saying that as a. Thing yeah, to say. yeah, yeah, I'm Muslim. OK, so now you get locked up, you get your you got what, three years flat or five, three years? flat, three flat. Yeah. Now you go upstate. What's the first what was the first shock going upstate? I was, pretty much I was sexually violated my first. 10 minutes of going into the prison okay and what you mean by that <laughs> <laughs> um so you know we go into downstate and they line us all up in one big area with like 15 20 co's and all i'm you know we still think it's a joke because you know i'm all going up there with my friends going down going downstate with my friends and we're just giggling we're like oh this is a you know whatever we don't you know, of course, the initial shock of me getting three years was like, yeah, damn my it. life is over. Yeah, that's a long Until time. Until the dude in the pen next to me, I'm like, I'm crying. You know, I'm, you know, not a little bit, right? And the go dude next to me, he's like, Yo, I got 13 years. Them tears dried up quick, and I said, Oh, this ain't nothing. Yeah, three yeah. years ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. So they it line really, y'all up in that they room. They line us up in this room in downstate. You know, before we have to take, then they're searching us because we still got. You know, and all we hear is some dude getting beat up in the back, like just some old white dude getting, uh, uh, like yeah, getting cooked. Getting that's cooked they, that's, that's what they do out there. So we were just looking at each other and they were like, don't look back. If you put your hands on the wall, if anybody takes their hands off the wall, we're cooking you. We're yeah, cooking that's, them. That's so, Donald's state. So now you see how, I'm smiling, right? Because the memories. It's the memories. So yeah, it, it snaps me right back and let me know that freedom is sweet. And that's for, why I'm smiling. For me, I'm always grateful for all the situation I've ever been in, good or bad, because it learns. You learn, you get stronger, and you can advise other people whether they want to listen or not. I told you, right? And so, anyways, they put us on the wall, and this one CO comes around, and they're searching us for weapons. This dude grabs my private part mm. and squeezes it, just yeah. hoping that the, I take the, my hands off the wall. Yeah. And so what he grabbed it from the back, no freaky. No, no freaky. No, from from the side, right? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he gives me a reach sexual, around. He, sexual assault, sexual yo, bro. They good. They are good for that. And I'm not gonna lie, I never got that done. But if you know about the credit card side, so all these gangsters that's running around on live talking all that stuff that was upstate New York, many of them is not telling you that they've been sexually assaulted but most of us were sexually assaulted and some that you don't see now that's because they in there still they they turned around and they pop so you had a choice whether you was going to put that work in get an extra five to seven years you know because it's going to be continuous no matter where you go they are going to sexually assault you even in my young mind and my little intelligence that i had i knew just keep my hands on the wall Right, and this dude wasn't just there just one time. He like squeezed it. Yeah. And just hold, and of course, any man's reaction is to turn around and yeah, start. That, yeah, they got me like that with my kufi. I I, I took the loss. I took the win. I didn't yeah, fall for it. Yeah, you didn't fall for it. You and did your three it. years. Oh uh, well, you know, and you know, so that was my initial thing to say. You know what? Things are out of my control. And then going to downstate, we did the downstate, and my first real wake up too was when it was chow hall what about what about before he grabbed you know before you get to downstate what about that room they put you in by yourself in jail or yeah, no no just in downstate behind the curtain where because for, for me the violation really came with <coughs> obviously i had to take a shower with we 10, took the shower with dudes, the guys with the shampoo butt naked yeah butt naked all of us and we had to pull yeah. a string a chain 
and the water would come out the out the out the, out the top holes. And it's but, ice water. And it's ice water. <laughs> yeah. And you had this lice thing you had to put on you. Yeah. Then you had to shave your head and your mustache. You're looking like a military, uh, you know, dude. But I'm so used to all right, wiggle your toes, you know, squat and cough. But when I got to downstate, it was like all right, wiggle your toes, bend over. And spread them. And spread them. So I didn't, I was like, yeah, I think he made a mistake. So I went down and coughed and he was like, no, bend over at the hip. So all them gangsters on the streets that did Fed time, that did state time in New York City, you got to go like here. You got to grab your hands and go here. Bro, when you start to think about how emasculating that is that was one when i went upstate i said never i would never come back to prison just from that 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 alone and a lot of the times it's unnecessary they're they're making you do it when they joking they joking they they they, they got the can they, i'm hearing them and next oh he got a cavity and you're looking back like are you gay like why why are you even making us do this at but the, unfortunately you know? that's where they hide weapons at when we in the can in your rectum you know yeah some dudes ain't cheeking when you got to go through them prison systems and them prison jails you got to go all the way up the fat hole but you know how many lie didn't have that type of that type of audacity so go ahead now you, you went to the chat hall yeah so this is my <laughs> second experience you know the, you know all the seats everybody's sitting down and there was one seat that was open in front of this you know one little seat open so initially i take the seat you know we don't I don't know the politics of prison. You know, I don't know the dynamics. Now we got YouTube. We got all these people that explain you're, you're ready for it. You know what the possibility. All we know is one dude is like, oh, you got to swing on the biggest guy in the prison so you can get your respect. Right. This is what they making you think. But now you got YouTube. You got people explaining things. So I don't really know. I, I sit down in the open seat. I sit across from one dude. He's come to find out his name is Tyson. Right. Mm. I don't know. I sit down. Just start eating my chow. He's the only one talking at the table. Everybody else's head's down. My ignorant, he made a funny thing and I made a comment on He said, who is this? Mm. I look around. Everybody put their head. Does anybody know him? Everybody put their head down. Come to find out he's the big dude in the jail, in the prison. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All the dudes are riding. He's the boss. And they all look down scared. I was like, oh. I looked at him. And thankfully, through his, he just like, oh, this dude don't know nothing. Yeah, he, he brand new. Yeah, and usually, me growing up, I was always around older dudes. You know, I looked, you know, at, at 25, I looked like I was maybe 12, right? Yeah, So, know. a lot of guys gave me a pass a pass all the time. Thankfully, I was given pretty a pass. Pretty white guy. You know, it's you know like, he doesn't, belong, <laughs> he doesn't belong really here. He's just, you know, he messed up. So, thankfully... He dude looked at me, he gave me a pass, but I'll tell you this, that meal was the longest meal I ever ate. <laughs> you know, because I'm just like, and then, you know, after, I'm like, I got to stab this dude. This dude disrespected me, yeah, you know, yeah. going through my head. But I was like, and from down I had to respect this dude. Where you know? did you end up? Uh, Bear Hill. Oh, man. Way up in, way on the Canadian border. Yo, my boy, you went to Bear Hill. Yeah. and I heard that the walk to Chow was like a mile. Oh, but you were putting people, dudes were getting put to sleep on that walk. Yeah, yeah I heard that put, walk yeah. was devious. Yeah, so. The walk from Chow to the blocks and from the blocks to Chow was crazy because in Bear Hill and a lot of these mediums, it's like buildings and all these buildings yeah. around. It's like a college campus. So when you come up out the building, you got to go all the way down so you could get to Chow. The Some places yeah. is. So when I was in the annex and the main is near the cafeteria, but the annex is on the other side. So it was like a. Yeah, and they said they walk. have COs maybe posted. Every nah, there is no COs <clears throat> out there. It's so like a free for all. Yeah, so that's where dudes put the most work in. That I, I'm not sure, but I met some real live cats from Bear Hill that I met, you know, and they told me through that walk, that's where it went down. I didn't know. I didn't know. So when they were giving us where we're going, the one dude was like Bear Hill to me, and the CO looked like, oh, he's dead. Like he's not making it out. That's why. That's what I got from the expression of the CO's face. Like I was like. I ain't never heard of Bear Hill. This is on the Canadian border. So we have Bear Hill and Franklin right next to and each other. Franklin. Yeah, Franklin, I think, is, they're the same. 
you know, as far as people. What was the what was the one right by Attica, the, the medium? Clint, no, Clint, no, that's the max. So. What, what, no, I forgot the name of it, but that was another spot I was hearing a lot of. Napa, no, not Napa, no. Uh, I'm not sure. So how you survived it? You know, like, dudes gave me a pass, you know, before, <laughs> you know, guys gave me a pass. I'm going to be honest with you, you know. And, and then you got tough. You got to get tough in nah, the system. I, well. Because when I'm, I, by the time I met you, you was beating dudes up on the street, Doc. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, that was violent. So, no, and Obviously, the, only, the only time it, I got it, in a fight was in jail, in county, you know, because the young dudes would mess with me. So I had to put in that. I just had to take care of one dude and nobody really bothered me, but. It's always the younger guys that cause problems. I would yeah, say, so yeah. usually the older guys you just ch chillax. It. Yeah, so so you so you did most of your time in Bear Hill. In Bear Hill, when I went down to uh, minimum, that was even worse. I prefer to be in a, I'd prefer to be in a max instead yeah. of you know I'd want my own cell. I want to be around, you know, that's but it, you know that's what it was. So I was grateful just to be. In and, what, in and how long you did in Bear Hill before you went to the uh Like almost two years. So you had like the, maybe a couple months to go before you made yeah. it Yeah, then everybody, they shipped, bring you down to... Uh, like What you did like out of the, thir the 36 months, you did uh, what, three? Two and, a half, two and a half years. Oh, yeah, You got to do 80%. And yeah. you've never been back? Uh, no, but, you know, little stuff in the street. But nothing from like me being a criminal or... Yeah, just like, regular yeah, stuff. Yeah, alhamdulillah, Islam, I needed, I needed prison. And Islam then, changed my life. And then how did that happen? Because you was already calling yourself so, a Muslim. Well, no. When I went in there, I was just hanging around old heads, you know, older dudes, and just whatever, just doing my workouts, not even, and just doing my time. And then I got around some Muslims that... Uh, so, yeah. You got around some even, Muslims? Even before I went to down, before I even went to Bear Hill... I think he should be good. Before I even went to Bear Hill, uh, you know, I asked my dad to send me some books, like, you know, send me a Bible. So he yeah. sent me a Bible, right? And I'm reading it. I'm like, is there anything else? And I try to, you know, find God. I always believed in God, you know. And I remember before I even went to prison, you know, I'm getting high. I'm doing whatever I'm doing. And I just pretty much was like, God, guide me. Take me away from whatever I'm doing. This is not what it's supposed to be like this. And six days later, I was getting sent up north, you know. Love like yeah, that. but because of that, of course, I, at the time, I didn't understand. But through that transition, and then, I found and a then, lot. So my then, father sent me books, and he sent me his mother's Quran and some other pamphlets that my grandmother and had. All the way up from there. And, you know, I was like, this is it. So I always carried around a Quran, even when I went to Bear Hill, and I would read it. I wasn't Muslim then. But I got around a few Muslims and they would give me advice and they would, and I just like, this is what I believe. And yeah. even before I was Muslim, I was reading Quran every day. Allah, I yeah, can't. and I just knew it was the truth from the first, Allah, from the like, first five verses of Allah. Ready. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny how I became Muslim because a few days before that, I was playing a baseball, I was about to play a baseball game. And I didn't know at the time, you know, I just went to the masjid and inside the prison i was like i want to take my shahada but they was like you got to wait a minute because we got to make sure you're not becoming muslim because oh, of yeah. any issues yeah and they were like well you got some dude that wants to handle his business which i'm like who and so a week before that some guy was we were going to play center i was supposed to play center field on a softball game and another guy took the position he was like i'm playing center field so i was like you know what i ain't gonna fight you over playing center field i was like you can keep it and you know whatever i thought nothing of it but that's when it was brought up to me a that week he later still wanted some yeah i thought he did i said you know what if you think i'm becoming muslim for protection i'm gonna handle this dude i was like i'm muslim anyway so yeah, i'm not I'm here for anybody's help real quick yeah and it wasn't nothing but yeah. i was like i'm surprised anybody even heard about it because yeah. i thought it was just water yeah. under the bridge yeah. i'm not taking thinking nothing of it but yeah so you know of course we know the stories of guys you know a lot of crips become muslim gds become muslim because yeah. Because yeah. the bloods run the prison, yeah. in majority of prisons. Now it's a little bit different. It's a little different, maybe depends where you go, but yeah, that's what it was. So, so now Muslim, on your way home. Um, I didn't want to. I'm good in there, like you he know. Was loving it. Just I was. I was getting fifty dollars. I was getting full bags of commissary every, every two, two weeks. weeks. Every. I was yeah, good. So you living a life. You sober. 
You're like, I ain't I'm going back home. I don't, I'm seeing all these brothers coming I into prison. Woman in here, huh? Yo, that's all I needed. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. I ain't going to lie. Sometimes you get so You're not even thinking like. about it. You're not even thinking about women. You be You're so good. zoned. Yeah. Reading the Quran, memorizing. I'm reading a Baq or a Muslim. Nobody's bothering me. I'm in my uh, book. Zuhud. Ten, time, you, you, ten yeah. hours a day just reading. I'm yeah, happy. Yeah, yeah. You kind of like, it locks you in on, you know. So, you know, so I know the feeling. So yeah, that's I. I can't say I was happy, but I was content and I was grateful just to be Muslim. And you know, and I'm seeing brothers coming in there. I'm like, how are you coming in? You're Muslim. Like, why are you falling? Yeah, you couldn't in? understand it. I that, never that was wanted me too. to. I never wanted to fall into that trap because I was like, if it's happening, then I'm. If I come out, what if I go back to my old life? I don't want that to ever happen. You was afraid. Yeah, I was afraid. I, you know, so that's why I was like, I'm safe in here, and you know. Alhamdulillah, you yeah. made. You made it home, ah, and and um, what year was that? You made it home. Oh seven. Oh seven. Yeah, and so I, I went it. in oh four, oh five, oh six. And for some like reason, of, somehow, me and him got in contact while I was locked up. The brother that taught us, uh, taught us how to read Quran, Abdul Salam, I think. Yeah. He's the one that put us in contact. Okay, yeah, I yeah. met a brother. He like, yo, there's a brother on the street, mashallah. He's Muslim. He's married to a Muslim sister. He's doing good. I'm gonna give you his info. And me and this guy, he would write me, and I would write him. Yeah. And, and then, we one day we met up in East New York. We didn't even know. Not even East New York. Masjid al Ikhwa. Masjid al Ikhwa. We lost contact. I came home, 2008. He Good walked friends. by, and he for sent some me reason, money was... doing all kind of stuff. We talking. I'm talking, and I brother say Islam, and I say yeah. I didn't even know it was him. I just saw like, somebody walking. Bro. I was like, this gotta be. <laughs> yeah. Yo, bro, I used to write you in it, and boom, at a lecture at Masjid al Ikhwa. Yeah, I can't remember. Sheikh Hassan al Ben, I think, came. It was one of the Mashiach. Yeah, yeah. but alhamdulillah, and then we've been um, we've been close, close ever since. He went to Yemen. Um, then been around a block. He then yeah. made some trips. You know, even if we don't see each other, we still. Oh yeah. He's in my thoughts. You know, that's what it is. Yeah, you know? yeah. So you know, he's he's notorious still on the streets. That's why he got the mask on. You know. No, <laughs> I just a lot of my family don't even know I've been locked up. Yeah, you know, so so. You know, no, you know, he's not really, don't want really to be too much on camera, hide his identity, which is good, well, alhamdulillah. So, yeah, as a Muslim on the streets, how, like, what's the, you know, what's the advice to kind of stay on the Salat al-Mustaqeem you, you got know, for the brothers? If you find brothers, you know, positive brothers that can keep you, you know, Cling to the, the street, brotherhood. Cling to the brotherhood. It's simple as that. Um, Where we met at, I'm telling you, there's one thing that the Imam always taught me. Um, uh, Imam at Talib. Uh, he was from Harlem and he said yeah. Yeah. he was an imam in the prisons he did, not that one he okay. did over 25 years and he said if you frequent the masjid you're going to meet the brothers you're supposed to meet yeah. you're going to be in contact with the people you're supposed to be in contact with and for whatever reason I was at the masjid at a lecture and me and the brother united he wasn't even going to come to that lecture. He ended up coming and he had another brother with him. And then, alhamdulillah, it's been been like that since. So what kind of advice you got from somebody that's using drugs in the streets, 19, 20, 14, 35, that's about to take that wrong turn and it can possibly lead to prison? Don't be like me, you know. I, I like to learn the hard way, it seems. So you got to be in it to win it and take your shahada if you're Muslim already. Just whatever you're doing, live life to please Allah, and that's the most important thing. And real quick, any difficulties you had since you've been been out as a Muslim when you came home? So as many. far as any difficulties, money, finding a wife, of course, praying on time. Uh praying was never, you know. No, nah, I always pray on time. I've never, alhamdulillah, I never missed a prayer. Allah you know, Allah maybe Allah. I was oversleep Fajr once in a while. You know, yeah. it happens. You know. The, if I don't wake up for the alarm, you know. What about what about dipping and dabbling back nah, in drugs? None even, of that. Everything was never. Um, so a long. Yeah, because it, you know, drinking for me was. I drank a lot, but it was never. I was never happy drinking. So it was I was the easy drugs. To stay I was. Away. It's easy to stay away from the drugs for me because I was obviously using that just to escape, you know. But when I found the truth, that just. Also, guys, just just so y'all know, we starting a Twitch for the gamers. This yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Follow Rip be, Right Raw. You know, <laughs> this is gonna be the the the, the Rip Right gaming team. You know, yeah. <laughs> we gotta I'm just get letting y'all know. So the link's gonna be in the description. Sub up. All right, bro. We appreciate you All right, brother. for being on the.
on a on a on a on a podcast, right? I'm not a good conversationalist, but you stay know. tuned, y'all. No. Stay ripped, six pack, big back, big facts. Exactly. <laughs>